Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Air Gap Networks at Black Hat 2021. My guests, Ritesh Agrawal, he's a CEO, and Dr. Chase Cunningham, both from Air Gap Networks. Welcome, gentlemen. Howdy, howdy. Now, today's topic is agent zero trust network segmentation and private application access. Now, that title is so long, we've unfortunately run out of time to do the interview. Just kidding. Uh, good topic we had to talk about. Chase, let's throw it to you first. Help us define micro segmentation and zero trust micro segmentation. So uh, you know, the easiest way to think about it really is to think about uh, a ship. Um, I think one of the best examples of a lack of micro segmentation was the Titanic. They had a compartment that got busted, turned into a couple compartments. Next thing you know, the whole ship goes down and uh, you wind up with a movie with Leonardo DiCaprio and, and a bunch of Oscars. So like that's the lack of micro segmentation. In B being ex-Navy, what we practice is watertight integrity, which is based on compartments. And what you're doing is you're setting up very specific, very select areas for things to move and everything else is locked off. And that way, if you lose a compartment, you don't lose the whole ship. That's really the difference in segmentation and micro segmentation is segmentation is some control, some uh, comp compartments in, in sort of big areas. And then micro segmentation, extremely granular, very segmented to keep control of things when something bad happens. Now, I love the analogy. It makes a lot of sense to me being at the bottom of the cybersecurity knowledge pool. I get it. And I think that's a super good way to describe it. Now, Ritesh, here's something I think about all the time. Are we in zero trust fatigue? Uh, how do you make it easy for enterprise IT, big or small, to start? And this is this is something I dealt with in the physical security world. You know, we called it complacency. You got the security person or even the police officer uh, who does the same thing all the time and same old, same old, and they don't get to the basics and remember the basics, and then mistakes are made. So let's talk to us about uh, zero trust fatigue and what's going on with that. Yeah, Jack, thanks Thanks for having us. Um, look, zero trust is misunderstood oftentimes by many of the IT organizations. And like many other tools, they think that if we had, a, uh, if we bought a product from certain company and uh, just wave our hands, it'll automatically be zero trust for the whole organization, which is not true. Zero trust is something that is sort of a journey. You have to start thinking about individual pieces of your organization, individual groups of your organization, and start somewhere and eventually you'll, you'll build up to be a zero trust organization. As a result, what has happened is there's a lot of talk about zero trust, but the misunderstanding of IT organization is creating the impression of fatigue, which I think it's clearly not. Now, one, one thing that is very clear is zero trust is the way of future as we go forward, whether it's in terms of protecting your devices or users or applications, zero trust is the only way, uh, in my humble opinion. The whole internet is zero trust. You don't trust me on the internet and I don't trust you on the internet. Why should we behave differently in the enterprise. Now, from the from AirGap's perspective, what we are doing is making it really easy for our uh, our customers to deploy AirGap and start the start the zero trust journey. And the first thing, first in that sort of order of uh, things, is to make zero trust agentless. So our solution is agentless, and there are a couple of benefits of this. Number one is you can deploy this across the organization within a short period of time. And the second thing uh, about agentless is it works with every device, every endpoint, whether it's a managed endpoint like your Windows PC or a MacBook Pro or, uh, uh, or, or some Linux machine or a server. It also works with unmanaged devices like your TV, like your thermostat, like Apple Watches and, and iPhones, et cetera. And so that becomes very easy for enterprises to roll out a zero trust solution that is uniform across the organization. And that's what AirGap's focus is. All right. So, you know, with all these layers of defense, and there's hundreds of them on people's systems, how does AirGap fit into that? Or maybe better, does it disrupt this normal process and, and really give us a solution that works much better? So AirGap's, first of all, is a very complementary solution to begin with. We would fit in with pretty much every investment that the customers have made and complement that to provide additional layer of security, which is a must-have. I think organizations traditionally because of legacy enterprise architecture have ignored the idea of lateral threat movement or those who have actually embraced it couldn't find an effective solution that can provide them protection against the lateral threat movement. So AirGap's first entry into the market is to make sure that we can stop lateral threat movement. 
And when it comes to latent threat movement, there are two aspects to it. One is device to device threat movement. Another one is device to application threat movement. And we have built a comprehensive solution that will stop these two sort of threat movements inside the inside the organization. And uh, that's what we keep focused on. So Dr. Chase, we're at uh, COVID 2.0, got a new variant coming back, remote, remote workforce maybe coming back, and probably it's already 50% now. What's your view on ransomware penetrating these legacy pit systems uh, or the custom built private applications? This has to be problematic. Yeah, it's, it's problematic, but honestly, it's a problem that we've we've solved. Um, this is not a problem that should continue to be a problem. I think the last stats that I saw said 33% of the global workforce will never, ever be full time five days a week in the office physically, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, you're hearing from major organizations that they're not going to mandate people come back or they'll let them work, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that type of thing, because we've proven that this model works and we can still keep an economy running um, being remote. But for for ransomware to work, it needs to be able to move. And if we have segmentation in place and we have isolation in place, you limit the spread. And we're doing that with COVID. You mentioned the COVID 2.0. When you wear a mask, when you stay home, when you get vaccinated, all those things you're doing are limiting the spread. It's the same thing with ransomware. In order to win, you just need to slow the spread so that you can respond. That's what segmentation, if done correctly, allows you to do. Excellent points, Mr. Atesh. Uh, AirGap announced secure application access. Can you share with us how that works and why AirGap is unique on this? So, Chuck, the biggest problem that we are seeing in the market today is the problem of legacy VPNs that are not secure. And we've seen this uh, in many situations, especially real life attacks like Colonial Pipeline and many more. You also, if you look at the um, CVE or threat announcements or vulnerability announcements from various VPN vendors, you would hear probably every month there is a new vulnerability for VPN stack. Now, as Dr. Chase said, many of the organizations have employees working from home. Last year, pretty much all of the employees were working from home, obviously, across the globe. And going forward, we'd see majority of the folks at least uh, spending significant time working from home. And so they continue to use VPN they would have uh, the same challenge of continuing to suffer the, uh, the attacks, essentially. AirGap has built this unique solution called Secure Application Access that sits in front of the application, ensuring that the applications are protected regardless of your access method. So you can come through VPN, you can come through your on-prem access, doesn't matter to, to AirGap. AirGap will always be shielding your applications from the adversaries. Now, if you have vulnerability in your VPN, hypothetically, um, and that your VPN stack got breached as it got during the colonial pipeline attack, you would have additional layer of protection with AirGap. And I think it's a must have. The second aspect of secure application access is the, the notion of uniform and, and universal multi-factor authentication. As we know, and we all use multi-factor authentication for pretty much every social media account like your TikTok, like your um, Instagram or Facebook or Google and so on and so forth. And I'm appalled that enterprises still have applications that do not support multi-factor authentication. For some reason, we, we deem our social media accounts more important than our corporate accounts. Shouldn't be the case. And I, I think what AirGap does it is actually implements multi-factor authentication for pretty much all of your applications without touching any of the applications, whether they're web applications, or non-web applications, whether your employees are using remote desktop protocol to connect with your Active Directory or internal assets, or whether your organization is connecting to SAP or your organization is connecting to, to SSH uh, or RDP protocol. So that's the beauty of AirGap. It creates a uniform experience for your employees, whether they're logging in to Salesforce or Office 365 or some homegrown applications that you've built five years ago or 10 years ago. You get that protection that you deserve with Secure Application Access tool from here. Dr. Chase, I'm always interested in your final thoughts, maybe some of your forecasting for what's going on. Uh, ransomware is, uh, as Ritesh had told me a couple of days ago, it's really just the beginning. This sounds like it's bad. We haven't seen the horse vote, I think. What are your what are your thoughts on going forward here? Well, uh, yesterday I read an article about uh, the uh, uh, COVID vaccination system in Italy being ransomed. And, you know, you can imagine that there's folks over there that are trying to get 
vaccines and people trying to validate that they've gotten the vaccine. And, you know, that's how we kind of claw our way back out of this whole thing. Um, you know, we've talked for a long time about that ransomware was going to cause human uh, catastrophe. And unfortunately, I think we're starting to see that. Uh, the, the issue that, that keeps me up right now is we do have a lot of these new services coming online with things around COVID response, vaccine relief, uh, vaccine integration, et cetera. And those are very, very ripe targets because they're just being thrown up on the internet and people are trying to get those apps out really quickly. Um, I'm picturing in the very near future, we're gonna see some sort of ransomware attack on some system like that in the United States, which will cause continued degradation of the response to COVID and getting us back out of this hole that we're dug into. Uh, good points, Dr. Chase. And Ritesh, to his point, um, I think the human suffering is something that we're most worried about. It's one thing to lock up my files and now I can't send out my subscriptions to my customers or something. That's not good. But when we start messing around with people's medical records, access to medical care through, through ransomware, this is certainly something much more serious. Give me some of your predictions and thoughts on, on where this is going. And, you know, really tell us how Eric App is going to stop this. Absolutely. Look, ransomware is here to stay. There is no doubt about that. And the cyber criminals are going to hit you where it hurts the most because that's how they can collect the most amount of ransom, essentially. So I'm not surprised. Uh, I'm obviously disappointed, but I'm not surprised to know that um, that the, the medical system is probably the biggest victim of ransomware attacks. And we'll see more mission critical um, services being impacted with ransomware as we go forward. I hate to say this every time I do, I really do, but what, I mean, I, this is the reality that we'll all have to face much like COVID-19. We wish it would go away, but it will take its own time. And the same thing is uh, with ransomware. It won't go away because we wish it would. Uh, it would go away if we built if enough immune system and air gap is in the business of providing that immunization, you need to have remote distributed workforce protected. Number one, that's where right now we have the biggest vulnerability or the weakest spots. Then you need to make sure that if the, if, and when these guys come back to work, they don't end up infecting every other device and every other element inside your network. Then you need to make sure that there's some protection for that. And finally, you need to make sure that you protect your business assets that are hosted in data center. That comprehensive solution is AirGap's promise. And uh, you can visit us at airgap.io. You can meet us at the Black Hat uh, conference that is going on right now. Uh, we are at IC booth 34. And we look forward to meeting you in person and saying hello. Ritesh Agrawal, CEO, Dr. Chase Cunningham from AirGap Networks. Good stuff, gentlemen. I look forward to more information from you as this evolves, because as we go into COVID 2.0, I think we're going to see much more uh, of an uptick in these issues and air gaps are to, to save the day as far as I'm concerned. Thanks so much for coming on air gaps at black hat 2021. Thank you, Jack, for having us.